Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to the second take of episode 34 of Extreme EvoCast, an all-purpose Pokemon podcast where we talk about news, trivia, and everything related to Pokemon. Oh my god. Normally I would redo that, but that was just a weird thing. Anyway, uh, so I was originally going to do... So if you've been following this, you know, the updates on this podcast, and you're listening to this on the day that it came out... um, you would know that I delayed the episode one day. Uh, normally it comes out on Wednesday, but um, it's Wednesday currently uh, when I'm recording this episode, so it's coming out on Thursday. I've done it in the past. Uh, it's normally just if I can't do it um, on Wednesday, or on if we can't record on Tuesday, or can't record any other time of the week beforehand, if I know ahead of the time, I'll just say, hey, I'm delaying it. It's happened, like, I think I've done it like two or three times before, but this time uh, was a special case where I delayed it because there was going to be a Pokemon Presents uh, this morning, which is something that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, You know, I'm glad that I can sort of talk about this fresh, uh, literally just happened uh, almost 12 hours ago. It's 10 p.m. as I'm recording this now, so like 13 hours ago. Um, But yeah, uh, normally I delay... I don't delay things very often, but like I said, I wanted to delay it because of the, um, because of the thing that was happening. Um, and I, I almost regret it. (laughs) I don't regret it, but I almost do, uh, which you will learn very soon. Uh, welcome back. This is a a fun episode that I'm very excited to talk about. Sort of, you know, I don't really want to undermine the actual topic of today because I do have a lot of things to talk about. Um, I'm not going to let the uh, the presents that happened this morning sort of take away from the fact that we're talking about the Isle of Armor. Um, it is out. <laughs> if you are not aware, I have played like 99% of it, if not like almost 100%. Uh, there's still a few things that I have to do. Um, like I said, I'll talk about that in a little bit once I get uh, into the details, but I've been having a lot of fun. I I streamed it, um, the day that it came out. Um, it was a little bit later than normal. I didn't get to play it like the minute it comes out, which is something that I'd like to do when I play Pokemon games, you know, with let's go Pikachu and normal sword and shield. Like I started, I, I played and streamed those games like the minute it came out, um, but I was away with some at some friends' house, and I uh, I couldn't play it as soon as it came out. Which you know I normally I sort of like I knew that this time would have been pat like past the release date. I knew that it would have been I would have been coming home on the day that it releases. But like honestly, I didn't really care because it was just DLC, um, and it wasn't like a midnight release. It came out at like nine o'clock in the morning, which I think is really interesting. Sometimes it comes out, you know. In the most Pokemon main series Pokemon games, you know, come out digitally at like midnight. Uh, but this one, like, I couldn't. I heard some people say they couldn't play it until like nine o'clock in the morning. Um, but yeah, I mean, both the Pokemon presents happened. I am happy that I that I sort of delayed this episode an extra day um, to talk about this. I didn't really want to record last night. I was kind of out of it. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm actually kind of happy that I had an excuse because I feel much more sort of ready to, to, to talk about this and ready to record today. Um, so you're welcome, I guess. Anyway, uh, before we get into those big things, let's talk about the news for today. There's not much. There's really, I mean, obviously there's the news uh, of the Pokemon Presents, but other than that, there's really not that much to talk about. Um, sort of a, sort of a, a, a scope uh, if you're, if you're, um, looking to hear me talk about a s- specific things because there is a lot to unpack this episode. Um, I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be doing a little bit of news. Then I'm going to be going over the Pokemon Presents in order. So, uh, you know, the one that happened, I forget the day, the one, the first one that happened, and then I'll be talking about the stuff that was, the stuff that was released um, today. And then after that, I'm going to go into the Isle of Armor. Um, so first of all, let's do a little bit of news. Like I said, there's not much. <laughs> um... There are, there is a online tournament happening uh, in all countries except for Japan, which I thought was really interesting. I don't know why. Um, There's probably a reason why. Um, There's a tournament happening in all countries except for Japan, um, an online tournament from June 25th to the 26th, which is actually the day that this episode is coming out to the 26th. Um, Isle of Armor Pokemon cannot be used. Which, I mean, I, I guess sort of makes sense because they're new. You know, they're not new, but they're new to the game. Uh, and it will be a VGC rule set. 
Um, you can probably find more about that on the Pokemon website, or if you are getting your sources from the same place as me, Cerebi.net. <laughs> Thank you again to Cerebi, of course, for providing most of the sources and most of the information that I talk about in this podcast. Um, the first 12 episodes of Pokemon Journeys, this series, is now available on in the U.S. on Netflix. So the, you know, the Pokemon anime, essentially, uh, is out on net, is on our Netflix, the American, or American, God, I'm so sorry, the English release of, uh, and I assume other languages too, but you know, the non-Japanese release uh, of the anime is out on Netflix, which is very fun. Uh, like I said when I first revealed this, that it's a Netflix exclusive anime, or at least here, it's 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 Netflix, or maybe it's not Netflix exclusive, but it is coming out on Netflix sort of as it releases, which is very surprising to me. Uh, so that's exciting. I'm probably going to watch it. If I'm being honest, I don't really show a lot of interest in it, but I mean... I might try it out just to, uh, just to, to sort of, you know, scope. I'm not really, like I said before, I'm not really a huge fan of the anime, uh, but who knows? Maybe I'll try it out. Uh, there is also, sorry, I was misinformed. There is also another, um, there's also another, um, competition. Wow. I could not think of words, um, that is happening. So there's the one happening um, June 25th. Oh, sorry, so there's one happening from now until June 25th. Um, battles will run from June 26th to June 28th. Is that a different one? I don't know. <laughs> Was I misinformed? If you're really, if you're really interested in it, it's on Cerebi, and I assume the Pokemon website, so I'm sorry, I don't really know. <laughs> I, I didn't see this before. I just thought there was a competition happening from the 25th to the 26th. Um, yeah. Like I said, if you want more reliable information, I, you know, I don't pride myself in being completely accurate when it comes to things. You know, I sort of just like to talk about things. So, um, yeah. Like, if you if you want actual good information, you can check on Cerebi, the Pokemon website. There is a new TCG uh, being released. It is called Legendary, <laughs> and I mean, on the front of it is Zerud, so I assume Zerud is going to be featured in it. That's all we really know at the time. <laughs> uh, there's, you know, you can look at the at the Cerebi's card decks uh, to see all the cards, and yeah, new TCG. Now, like I said, there's very little uh, news, like three things, not even three things. Um, so let's move on to the Pokemon Presents. This was exciting. The first one was very exciting. Uh, this happened... Did it happen before or after the Isle of Armor? I think it, it was before, right? Because the Isle of Armor came out... When did the Isle of Armor come out? Hold on. I can look at this right now by going onto my Twitch page and seeing when I streamed it. Seven days ago. Literally a week ago. Which is... I should know these days. I mean, like, I planned these days. We knew these days. 21st? Is that what it was? It's the 24th today, or right now, I suppose. And, oh, the 17th. Okay, you the 21st. What am I talking about? The 17th. Um, oh, it actually, okay, it happened on the day that the Isle of Armor was released. Okay. My bad. Um, so Pokemon Presents <laughs> happened, and first off, there was Pokemon Smile. Pokemon Smile um, is something that I'm actually going to use. I haven't gotten around to downloading yet. I've had a, a quite a busy week so far, um, so I haven't had a chance to actually get going with it. Um, it's a bubble game. It's, you brush your teeth. <laughs> you brush your teeth to catch Pokemon. It's a really good idea, and it that feels so weird to say. I don't know why. Um, it's a really good idea, <laughs> and I mean, I've seen a lot of praise. I've seen more praise than some of the other things we're going to talk about today, which it makes me kind of happy because, like, it's it the art style is adorable. The concept is super cute. Of course, catering towards kids' health is something that you cannot go wrong with. Um, so you know, it's good. Um, it's, it's, it's very cute. It's very, I like what they're, what they're going for. Again, like it's kind of on the same era as Pokemon sleep where it's literally just like, Hey, 
you want more health, you want to brush your teeth better, you want to sleep better, catch some Pokemon while you do it. You know? Why not? They know. They know that, like, these things are lovable. They know that people love them. So, hey, I mean, using them to, you know, convince or, I say, I guess, teach kids and even, I mean, me, <laughs> other people to brush their teeth and sleep well is, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's very, very cute. I'm going to download it and try it out. Like I said, I haven't yet, but I will update you once I do. I, as embarrassed I, as, as, as embarrassed as I am to talk about this, or to, to, to admit this, I'm not really super great at brushing my teeth. I forget sometimes it's not really in, like, obviously when I go to school and stuff, um, like, you know, when I'm in college and I, and I have a routine, I usually always do it before I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning. But like now that, you know, with, with quarantine and, and I'm off for the summer with like literally nothing to do all day, I admit that I forget most of the time. So, uh, yeah, it's good. I'm going to use it and it's probably going to help me brush my teeth better. So there's nothing I can complain about. Next up on the agenda, uh, Pokemon Cafe Mix. Um, a game that I sort of described or I sort of immediately thought about as, like, it's, it's sort of in the same, like, okay, so here's how I'm thinking, right? I, in my mind, I classify Pokemon games into three categories. Main series games, obviously. Pokemon Black and White, Pokemon X and Y, Pokemon Sword and Shield, you know. Spin-off games, which are Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Pokemon Ranger, Pokemon Snap, how um how fitting uh games like that which are more centered around the world and and you know and and I, and have you know I'm not saying that Pokemon Cafe Mix does not have a lot of gameplay but it has more gameplay than most of the games that I'm about to mention which go into the third category which are like I want to say puzzle games but there's more Pokemon Pinball the Pokemon trading card game Game Boy game that came out, uh, Pokemon Cafe Mix, Pokemon Rumble. Well, Rumble is in a weird mix of the two. Rumble is sort of the line, on, on the line. Um, Pokemon Treze, Pokemon, um, what is that game? Oh man, I need to look this up now. Hold on. Pokemon Shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know like they're puzzle games um and like whether or not they have you know sort of um sort of actual gameplay elements and stuff well obviously they have gameplay but act, you know other things than just being a puzzle game is you know um a pretty big staple of those games like pokemon um Chirse, pokemon pokemon shovel you know they have other mechanics in them that are related to pokemon that isn't just like oh it's a it's a puzzle game with a skin on it um and pokemon cafe mix i think falls into that category not that it's a bad thing obviously oh and then i guess there's the fourth category which are now the weird mobile games which pokemon sleep and pokemon you know uh pokemon smile fall into um, but Pokemon Cafe Mix sort of falls into that third category for me. And like I said, it's not that it's bad. It, obviously, those games are great. There's nothing wrong with them. But they don't really hit my radar as much as the, the main spinoff games do. Um, you know, the main or the spinoff games do, I suppose. Not, like I said, like, I am genuinely interested in playing Pokemon Cafe Mix. I forget, is it free? Do I have to buy this game? I don't know. I'm watching a video right now, and it's the Japanese one, so I can't understand anything they're saying. I generally forget if they're, um, I guess I can look. I, I forget. I mean, the Pokemon Presents was a while, uh, more than a week ago, or a week ago now. Is it free? Ah, free to start with, um, with, like, in-app purchases. Now, Something something that's a little bit weird. I would consider Pokemon Quest to be in the third in the third category. Um, Pokemon Quest did it was more of like a you know mystery dungeon esque game with its like overworld style and actual and levels and stuff. But like, um, I would consider Quest to be sort of in that third category, um, just because it had you know it had microtransactions. It was not a big game where you know. Um, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon are, and, and Ranger, you know, they're pretty big games. Um, and like I said, none of this is, is meant to, to make 
make any of these games look bad. I mean, Cafe Mix is probably really good. I'm gonna try it certainly, uh, maybe <laughs> if I if I feel like it, if I get a, if I get the time to it, um, you know, sort of. I don't know. Like, it's not it's not high on my priorities right now. I'm not super interested in playing it. It looks cute. I've heard people say there's a lot. It's really really good. Um, but you know. Sure, it is what it is. That's all I can really say about it. Uh, it looks adorable. The art style is really cute. It was sort of just like slapped on there like, okay, sure. This is cool. I like it. It's a little bit more it's a little bit more unique, I would say, than Pokemon Shuffle, Pokemon Troze, stuff like that. It's it's very obviously it has this art style. Not that those games don't, but I don't know. Something about it stands out to me over those those two other games. I don't know how in depth the Oh my god, I just played it and it was super loud. <laughs> I don't know how um, how in-depth the gameplay is of past what we saw in the trailer, but it looks... It looks. <laughs> it looks fun. It looks good. Um, maybe not something that I'm going to get. I, I honestly don't know. I'm on the fence about Pokemon Cafe Mix. I mean, I may as well just get it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to get my Switch. I'm going to buy it right now. Or not buy it. I'm gonna download it right now. Screw it. I have convinced myself. Uh, but the thing that the thing is, whether or not I decide to play it is another question. Here, I'm gonna turn this volume up so you can hear the, you can hear me putting my password in to the eShop. Riveting. I know. That is the wrong password. I don't know my own passwords. There we go. Pokemon Cafe Mix. Right on the front of the featured page. Also, the jumper of challenge. Oh, I forgot about that. I'm gonna get that too. <laughs> uh, this has just become this has just become a Lily shop something eShop. Yeah, I got the jumper of challenge. Okay, let me let me actually download Cafe Mix. I'm not gonna play it on in the podcast, obviously. Um, I don't think I'm allowed. Am I allowed to do that? Probably not, huh? I mean, I mean, maybe. I don't see why not. I'm gonna download it right now. You can hear the. Can you? Can you hear that? There you go. <laughs> it's downloading. Okay, I'm just going to shut this off for now. I downloaded it. Whether or not I'm going to play it is, you know, it's, it's on, I'm on the fence. <laughs> but in conclusion, it looks fun. It looks good. And hey, uh, you know, no skin off my back. And finally, the biggin, or actually no. I Okay, I would, yeah, the biggin of, uh, of this presentation. Pokemon Snap 2, or... Is it Pokemon Snap 2? Is that what it's called? Is it called Pokemon Snap 2? I, like, didn't even... Oh, new, Pokemon New Snap. Why did I, I... I wrote down Pokemon Snap 2 in my notes. I don't know why I did that. New Pokemon Snap. Or Pokemon New Snap. Who knows? Um, new Pokemon Snap. Wow. <laughs> Who in the world was expecting this? Um, nobody. Oh, well, I mean, I'm sure some people... Some people were hoping for it but did anyone expect it i don't know but i am super excited about it i mean it it features the i almost just said score bunny it features score bunny everyone i'm i'm sold uh it features uh sword and shield pokemon generation seven or generation eight sorry um and i mean i never played I never played Pokemon Snap as a kid because I am younger than that game sort of allowed me to. What When did Pokemon Snap come out? I mean, it was for the N64. I never owned an N64, unfortunately. My first console was a Game Boy Advance and Pokemon Ruby. Pokemon Snap came out 1999. That game came out when I was born. Oh, you know. Yeah, the moment I was born, it came out. No, I mean, it was, it was released before I was born. This game is older than me. So I'm su- I'm not surprised that I never played it before. Maybe I'll play the original. Uh, who knows? But whether or not I do that, I am extremely excited about Pokemon Snap. New Pokemon Snap. Uh, it looks great. We we haven't really seen that much. Obviously, it looks fu- it looks gorgeous. I almost just swore it looks gorgeous. Um, like oh my god, I'm looking at the trailer right now. The Pokemon just the 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 thing that I'm most excited about with this game is giving personality to Pokemon. That is something I loved about the original Pokemon Snap. All of the games from the sort of N64 era, you know, the um the Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Coliseum, all those games, the 3D animations um 
you know, that many people use to unfortunately criticize Pokemon Sword and Shield gave Pokemon a lot of personality, which you know me, that's something that I very, very much enjoy. Um, and this is just, this is just chock full of it. I can already tell just by the trailer. And it, it, it fills my heart with joy to know that there's just going to be more of it. I hope to God that this game is good. I mean, it looks good. You know, immediately when Sword and Shield was released, people had criticisms or shown people had criticisms. I haven't seen a single bad thing about this game. Um, uh, like, it, uh, I'm pretty, it's sort of just like a general consensus in the Pokemon community that everybody is excited for this, um, which is a, v- a really good breath of fresh air, um, especially with what I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. But like, it's such a breath of fresh air to sort of just see the community as a whole which is something that as a community we struggle very much to do to come together and form one one big conclusion that this game looks awesome and pretty much every single person that i've talked to so far is excited for it uh or either either excited for it or is like okay sure i haven't seen a single negative thing about this game and that just makes me really happy um like seriously i mean i I don't know if I'm coming across, but I'm very excited. <laughs> like, I'm more just excited about how much positivity this game has sort of brought upon the Pokemon community. Um, obviously, it's not what people were expecting. Uh, it's not the Sinnoh remakes. It's not the Let's Go Espeon and Umbreon that everyone was hoping for, or maybe not hoping for, but expecting. Um, it's not a main series game, which I would have been surprised if it was. Uh, but it's there sort of it's sort of like pokemon mystery dungeon dx where people were like oh, really okay <laughs> this looks cool you know uh, I, actually i didn't really i really i didn't really touch on that very much um that mystery dungeon dx also kind of brought that from the community a little bit less so a lot of people had had some criticisms but like i said i mean i know it's only been a week but i haven't seen any criticisms of pokemon snap new pokemon new snap or new pokemon snap I'm just gonna call it everything, apparently. Um, but, like, Mystery Dungeon DX had that sort of same feel where, you know, nobody, people were like, sure, <laughs> it looks cool. Uh, it's not what we were expecting, but all right. And I suppose that's what I have to say about this. I mean, yeah, cool. I'm excited for it. And now, for what you have all been waiting for, maybe. Well, maybe not. Probably not considering the, the the nature of uh of this topic mm, like pokemon unite <laughs> the uh the unfortunate release or the unfortunate um what's the word i'm looking for presentation that was shown this morning at nine o'clock sharp est when Everybody was expecting something different. Uh, oh, Sinnoh Remix. Let's go Umbreon and Espeon. Or let's go Johto. You know, something. It just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, Pokemon Unite. A MOBA. League of Legends. Pokemon style. <laughs> I don't really know how to... I don't really know how to feel. I'm not going to lie. Um, I mean... I'm sure you saw the trailer. If you haven't watched the trailer... Um, I I genuinely forget the name of the of the person who did the presentation this morning, and I apologize. Um, but he show you know the the director of the Pokemon director of Game Freak. I don't know if that's actually what what uh what what he does, but that's what I'm guessing. I don't remember. I apologize again. Um, he you know he played with like uh, nine other people, and they showed off the game. It's a five v five League of Legends style MOBA. Uh, which is for Nintendo Switch and mobile. It is coming out soon. I mean, I I don't know anything about MOBAs. I have played League of Legends probably three times for two hours total, and I know nothing about it. Uh, I know I like some of the characters, and the gameplay is okay. That's pretty much all I know about it. I do not think I'm going to be playing this game. I, I assure you, uh, I am not interested in MOBAs. Uh, I never got into Dota. Like I said, and I only played a little bit of League of Legends, and even then, I didn't really have that much fun. I mean, I might, I might like watch stuff about it, just because it's Pokemon. You know, I don't know. It's it's a mixed bag, and obviously, there's a lot of negativity about about it going on right now in um on Twitter, everywhere, pretty much. Um, 
you know, with, with with this game and how it was disappointing and how there's a lot to be said. Uh, so there's a lot to sort of unpack here. And I guess I just want to say I'm kind of, unfortunately, I am in the majority here of uh, people who were disappointed. Uh, not that I don't think the game looks bad. I mean, it is what it is, even less, even more so than Pokemon Cafe Mix. I know I said that a lot, but like... I don't really, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to say. It features cross-play between, between, um, phone and Switch, which is good, I mean, that's cool. I just, it, I, I don't know, man, I genuinely don't know how to, how to feel about this. I was expecting something much more interesting, uh, from this presents. I mean, I don't really recall exactly how much it was hyped up by the Pokemon team, uh, you know, it was like, join us for a extra special presents on the 24th after this one, you know, um, it's just, I know that, that we hyped it up more than the Game Freak actually hyped it up, but I cannot help but feel just a little bit disappointed, um, and I hope that's understandable, you know, obviously, you are feel, you are free to like what you like, and I am in the boat of, okay, it looks cool, I am just a little bit disappointed. Uh, I'm not. Ex- I'm not. I can't say with a straight face that I'm excited about this game, but I'm not. I'm not mad. You know, I'm not genuinely upset. I'm just like you know. I, I sort of talked a big talk about how salty I was on Twitter, but it was nine o'clock in the morning. I just woke up. Now that I've sort of had some time to look at it in retrospect, I'm not upset. Um, and I don't think. I don't think it's right for people to necessarily be extremely upset by this. I mean, it is what it is. It's cool, I suppose. Obviously, that's a that's a that's a subjective opinion. But like, it's not like they spat in our food, you know. They they. I mean, he see you know the people. They seemed very excited to show it to us, and it's a it's an innovative, it's an innovative idea, and I'm not necessarily opposed to new things like this new sort of genres that pokemon is grabbing i mean they you know we started with pokemon and now you know we're going into 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 mobas now i suppose um but like i don't think that there's any reason to be necessarily upset about it besides the fact of besides disappointment that they didn't show anything cooler and um like you know, there's there's some things to be said about the toxicity of fandoms, especially the League of Legends fandom, and sort of bringing that in with, um, you know, bringing it in with the Pokemon community, which is arguably, it you know, it has a toxic side, and you know, people have been have have been expressing their concerns about bringing them together and sort of combine, almost bringing the two together in hopefully not in an unhealthy way and that is i suppose the only real big argument that you can say for being upset about the game actually existing in the first place but i don't think there's anything else that is really outside of just general disappointment that they didn't show anything else (laughs) um and that will pass you know people will stop being salty about it i'm sure that it will it will ruin the experience for other people i guarantee you that if they release it at a better time there would be more people who are playing it you know less people would be playing it for the sake of just in spite of that they didn't show anything better. And I hate to say it, but it's true. Uh, I guarantee you there's going to be at least a few select people out there that do feel that way. But like I said, I think that that's the only real argument that you can make um, is the toxicity and just the general disappointment about, about the game's release, when it was released, what was you know, hyped up, what was predicted to be released, and what we actually got. Um, so, I mean, that's all I really have to say about the topic. You are welcome to dislike the game, obviously. You know, you can just dislike the game because it's it's a game that you don't particularly enjoy. But I don't think that... I think that what I said is generally how I feel. Obviously, you can have different opinions, but I I genuinely do not think that there is a reason to get upset about it other than the few things that I've mentioned before. And I mean, sure, I'm going to say it again. It is what it is. <laughs> it's a Pokemon MOBA. We just kind of have to accept that it happened. Okay, now that we've got the that can of worms out of the way, let's go on. Oh, I forgot to talk about something. Well, okay. In hindsight, it's not really that important. Um, 
it's sort of the same thing that I say every time this happens. Uh, community day happened. It was Weedle. But yada yada, I didn't get to go out. I didn't get to do anything. I've explained before. I've, once I go back to college, I promise I'll actually go out and play Pokemon Go so I can talk about it. But I just... I, I, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this at least four times by now, so I'm not going to go over it again. But long story short, I, I can't play Pokemon Go because of where I am, where I'm living right now. So, like, I didn't get to experience it. I hope that you had fun. These Revunity days, or as I like to call them, are getting shorter and shorter and less and less, you know, enthusiastic. But I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry. If, you re if there is a, you know, a mob at my door... um you know, asking, you know, asking why I didn't talk about the Weedle community day in Pokemon Go more in depth than I am, than I have, then I will dedicate an entire episode to it if people care about it that much, but until I can actually talk about these things, I'm not super interested in them, so I apologize. Anyway, let's move on to an actual segment, uh, everyone's favorite segment where we talk about a random Pokemon every episode, Random Pokemon of the Week. Today's Pokemon uh, is number 402. I'm going to leave that there just in case you want to guess what Pokemon that is. I think that would be a fun little game. I'll pause every time every, before so you can guess. It's Krikatoon. Uh, Krikatoon is a bug-type Pokemon introduced in Generation 4. It evolves from Krikatot at le starting at level 10. W pardon? Excuse me? It's level 10? I don't think I've ever had a Krikatot in my party. <laughs> Is it, it really evolves at level 10? That's really low. I thought it was like at least level 18. Like, I guess it makes sense because a lot of the other bug type Pokemon evolve at such a low level. But like level 10? It's only, it's only in its, in its, it's only in its base stage for, you know... 10% of its of its lifespan. Okay. We're just going to go with it. I am just very surprised at the at the low level of that. Uh Krikatoon is the cricket pokemon. It has the abilities swarm and technician as its hidden ability as a 50/50 male female gender ratio. It is 3 foot 3. Wow, that is a lot taller than I thought it was. Uh or 1 meter exactly. Wow. Ain't that fun. Um 56.2 pounds or 25.5 kilograms. Um, yeah. Uh, Krikatoon, of course, is known for its... I'm pretty sure that this Pokemon would be probably the one of the most forgettable Pokemon on Earth if it wasn't for its wonderful cry. <laughs> uh, you know it well. The, uh, you know. I don't know how I could hear that. Yes, I had that prepared. Uh, thank you for asking. The amazing cry of uh, Krikatoon is so funny. Um, but I think that Krikatoon deserves a little bit more of attention besides its little, its its very amazing cry, <laughs> which I think has tainted the Pokemon to becoming no more than just a meme. Its, it's design is pretty good, uh, you know? Well, I use good sparingly. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a cricket, and it has big spindly violin I don't know the name of the thing that you use on a violin you know the bow is that what it's called hold on I'm sorry I know I'm doing a lot of googling today sort of I like to have I like to have a little bit of a of a you know um a little bit of a of a sort of tangenty uh part of this podcast where I can just it is called a bow how did I know that I don't know how I knew that. Uh, you know, I like to have a little bit of a time where I just sort of do nothing for minutes on end. I think that's good entertainment. You know, I wanted I want to keep it less of a professional. Make it make the podcast seem a little bit more um, unprofessional, but in a good way, more personal. Uh, but anyway, it has these weird arms <laughs> that are like bows of a violin that it uses to make these sounds, which is why it has the cry in the first place. You know, there's no, it's not like it does. It just does that for no reason. Uh, and it's got a big old mustache, which I think is very funny. A big old nose, big old mustache. I just realized that it actually looks like a violin. Oh, I guess it, it rubs its arms on its body to make the sounds. That makes perfect sense. I was just, I was just thinking to myself, you know, how does it, 
how does it do that? I mean, uh, crickets, you know, rub rub their legs, or, you know, or their their appendages on their body in order to make this their their uh, well known sound. But I would never really presumed that that's how Cricket Tune did it. Probably because I don't uh, think about Cricket Tune ever. Uh, but you know, I think it deserves a little bit more recognition. It's based on like a you know a composer. It's got that big old big old bushy mustache. It looks like a violin. I don't think its design is too bad. I think it's okay. Obviously, it's not a very good Pokemon. Uh, but I think it's I think it's okay. I I'm a big fan of this Pokemon. Uh, well, I wouldn't say big fan. I'm a fan of this Pokemon. Um, let's see. Let's go into some. Let's go in. Actually, is there a Pokemon? Oh, there's not Mystery Dungeon. I want to know what this thing says or talks about. <laughs> if you are able to talk to this thing, uh, it doesn't have it doesn't have a, a sort of these you know these these dialogue options when you talk to it um, in any of the later Mystery Dungeon games other than the first ones. And this is a Gen Four Pokemon, so obviously it wasn't out by then, which disappoints me. Um, so we don't really have any, like, lore, you know? Uh, I guess we can look at its Pokedex entries, sure. It crosses its knife-like arms in front of its chest when it cries. See, I would have I would have learned if I just kept going for, like, two minutes. It can compose melodies ad-lib. It signals its emotions with its melodies. Scientists are studying these melodic patterns. There is a village that hosts a contest based on the amazing variable cries of this Pokemon. By allowing its cry to resonate in the hollow of its belly, it produces a captivating sound. And everything else is the same. Interesting. Okay, I mean, it's exactly what you'd expect it to be. It's just kind of... It's, it's a cricket, you know? <laughs> uh, let's see. What is it? What is it? Does this thing have any trivia? No. No trivia. Cricket tune is a combination of cricket and tune. Wow, I never would have guessed. Cricket tune is based on a cricket. Again. Never would have guessed, which is widely known for its loud chirping sounds used to attract females. Crickets use a form of stridulation? Stridulation? How do you pronounce this word? Doesn't say. Wait, nope. I thought maybe they'd have a pronunciation. Normally, Wikipedia has, like, the pronunciation of words. It literally just doesn't. Okay, stridulation? Stridulation? Who knows? Uh, which they do by striking their forewings together. This is obviously mistaken. Oh. But this is often mistakenly believed by done by rubbing their legs against their body, which is a mistake that I made about five minutes ago. Uh, as Cricketune does, it also resembles a violin beetle. Oh, a violin beetle, duh! It doesn't just resemble a violin; it resembles a violin beetle uh, with an abdomen assuming the appearance of an actual violin or a simple stringed instrument with arms that function as a bow. Via Cricketot's Japanese name, Cricketune. Oh, Cricketot's Japanese name. Cricketune may also be based on the black spotted leaf beetle. Cricketune additionally resembles a typical depiction of a musical conductor or maestro due to its mustache, wings that look like a cape, or Cricketune's baton like forelimbs. Yep. Uh, it has two different. It has it has gender differences. The females have a, a smaller mustache, which I think is really funny. I'm glad they didn't just like nix the mustache altogether. You know, you go, girl. You got that big bushy mustache, and she she don't care. Um, it's shiny. Actually, is not that bad. I was kind of expecting it to be garbage, but it's. I don't think I've ever really thought about this Pokemon or looked at its shiny, and it's really not that bad. I mean, it's um, something that I'm noticing immediately is that I don't actually know. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna look into this right now. Uh, I don't actually know if any of the colors are changed or if it's just that optical illusion or I guess just the basis in color theory where uh, a color looks lighter than it actually is when it's on another lighter color because the red of the normal Cricket Tot uh, has like these yellow streaks on its body uh, that act as like the, you know, the, um, the neck of the violin. And on the yellow, on its shiny, which is like a bright golden yellow, it seems to be... Uh, it's, it seems to have changed from a yellow to a white to sort of accompany this, this new golden color. And I'm seeing if it's different. Moment of truth. Here we go. It is different. Wow. I don't know why that that excited me so much. It is different. They changed the color of the yellow streaks on Cricketot's body because it is already yellow and it's shiny. They just changed it to like a little bit of a lighter color. But hey, you know, that's fun. I, I appreciate that. I like that. A lot of the times they just like, you know, pass, they just kind of use the fill tool and 
uh, color a Pokemon a different color, but I like that they actually paid attention to that to make it so it didn't just sort of dilute into the rest of its body. How close is this color when compared to the shiny? I know you can't see this right now. Uh, it's actually not close at all. And with a very quick edit in this, in my art program, I have put the original stripe colors on the shiny and it does not look any different. <laughs> I don't know how I even noticed this in the first place. I mean, it does look a little different. You can tell that it's lighter, but, like, it doesn't look bad. It's not like it would have diluted it. Well, maybe a little bit, now that I look at it. Yeah, I guess I guess it does kind of dilute, which makes sense why they would sort of change that. Anyway, I'm getting extremely off topic. Uh, Cricketune's shiny. It just, it's just yellow. It's just gold. You know, I mean, it's not bad. I'll get, you know, I'll be generous because I like this Pokemon. Uh, it's a 7 out of 10. Sure, why not? Cricketune gets a 7 out of 10 for me. And, uh, let's go on to Cricketune's Smogon page, which is uh, about as dry as you could possibly get in terms of actual content. Uh, Cricketune is untiered. Doesn't even have a tier. Uh, an HP of 77, an attack of 85, a defense of 51, a special attack of 55, a special defense of 51, and a speed of 65. I am now realizing this Pokemon is more garbage than I thought it was. Uh, even with Technician... Oh, this is this is written by Back at You, Bro. Even with Technician, Cricketune's lack of any offensive stats prevents it from using this quirk to its fullest. Due to its weakness to Stealth Rock and very poor defensive, Cricketune only functions as a suicide lead on the niche playstyle of Sticky Web, but even then, but even even there, it is outclassed by Smeagol and Shuckle, which compress both Sticky Web and Stealth Rock, are faster or bulkier, and have far better support moves like Spore and Encore. Uh, and its move is its, its uh, set is Sticky Web. Endeavor, Taunt, and Bug Bite, just for that little extra damage in case you need to attack with poor old Cricketune here. Uh, Focus Sash, Technician, Jolly Nature, which is plus speed minus special attack, 252 attack uh, EVs, 4 special defense EVs, and 252 speed EVs. Not good. Cricketune is only to be used as a suicide lead by setting up Sticky Web and then maybe knocking down an opposing Pokemon with Endeavor and Bug Bite. However, this is, e this is easily shot down by taunt users such as Oreo or Corio E and Quillfish, and the latter is often a lead in its own right. Cricketune is also outclassed by Smiggle and Shuckle, which both carry far superior support moves. How sad. I feel bad for this thing now. But hey, I mean, that's the nature. Some Pokemon are going to be worse than others, and Cricketune really got the wor the yeah, the worst of it. Poor thing. Now, let's move on to the big, the big topic for today. Um, uh, it's been about an hour, or almost two, actually, uh, since I did so, uh, since I did that last section. So if anything sounds any uh, different. That is why I have I took a little bit of a break. I I was tired <laughs> of talking for forty five minutes about Pokemon, um, which is rare for me. Normally I don't like to take breaks, uh, but I don't know I was just, I wasn't feeling it. I hit stop and I'm like I need to take a second. Uh, I know it was only mere seconds for my lovely my lovely listeners, uh, but. Just letting you know, if anything sounds different, I don't know what would sound different. If anything sounds different, uh, it's because it's a little bit later in the night. It took a little bit of a break, but I am ready to get back into it, and I am ready to talk about, to nobody's surprise, uh, the Isle of Armor. The Isle of Armor. Where is my? I'm getting a I'm getting a Roblox ad right now, trying to open up Google Docs. Um, the Isle of Armor released. Uh, on the seventeenth, same day as the uh, same day as the Pokemon Presents, and I streamed the heck. Well, I wouldn't say the heck out of it. I streamed it for a total of eight, almost nine hours, um, which is all it took, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, I I played it quite a bit uh, on stream. So if you if you would like to watch uh, the vods, if you'd like to watch me play it. Those are available on twitch.tv slash I will also be uploading um, highlights or, I suppose, sort of a uh, same thing as my Sword Nuzlocke, almost like a, a 
a pre-recorded Let's Play uh, that I post episodically on my YouTube channel, also Lilician, if you're interested in that. Um, but I'm not, I can't guarantee that that will be out anytime soon because I'm not even done uploading my Sword Nuzlocke yet, so I'm not going to do the DLC before I'm done with the actual base game. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Um, it was fun. Um, I don't really have, I'm going to be honest with you, this, this isn't going to be like, I always say that it's not going to be a review, but then I end up doing it exactly like a review. Uh, I just sort of want to info dump about this thing. I'm not going to lie. I really don't feel like I have all that much to say about it. Um, <clears throat> first of all, let me just say that it looks really good. Um, a lot of the areas in the game are unique. They are gorgeous. Uh, the entire uh, the entire isle, isle, island, isle, uh, whatever, takes place sort of in a wild area type uh, environment where Pokemon spawn pretty much everywhere, no matter where you're going. Um, which personally, I really enjoyed. I mean, I guess that happens in Pokemon normally, but it wasn't. It was like it was a wild area, all throughout the game, all throughout the expansion, uh, and I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, and like the the areas the, there were caves there were lagoons there were you know uh, there's uh, there's the ocean there are the little islands that are surrounding the place there are forests there's a desert area there's like a place for every type uh almost every environment that you'd expect to see in sort of a wild area type thing except it's much better than the wild area uh, in the base game and i am enamored at the amount of uniqueness that this place exudes um it looks gorgeous i will say that is like the the best and if i had to say one thing about this expansion it would be it would if i only could say one thing about it it would be that that it looks so good so if you were disappointed with the um graphics or the look of pokemon sword and shield i would i would uh request or not request recommend that you pick up this expansion and you try it out because it looked so good. Uh, obviously, they used pretty much like the same assets. You know, there's still the same grass, the same berry trees that are super out of place, um, which makes sense in a way. But like, you know, none of the assets are necessarily different, but like it's just like the environment, the caves, the mountains, just the look of the entire area was so good and like you know like there was a there was a point in the expansion where uh cub you had to bring cub foo around uh to all the different area or like a different area or an area of the of the expansion to build up its 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 friendship and like the whole mechanic was that oh you bring it somewhere that looks gorgeous and it becomes friends with you faster and like they know that it looks really good and they're like yeah we know it looks good here bring your bring your bring your little bear uh, to one of these gorgeous locations, <laughs> you know, um, it was like sightseeing required sightseeing, but it was, it was worth it. Cause the game looked so good. Um, I explored pretty much every area of the game. Um, I think, uh, I think there was a few areas in like the ocean in like the sea that I didn't explore. Uh, that was just because I didn't really feel the need to, um, I, I, I have a pretty good understanding of the layout of the island. Uh, it's not as big as you expect it to be, but it is pretty sizable. Um, like, it, it was fun. Uh, like, you know, like I said, if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this, it's gorgeous. And it's, it was, it was fun. It was, it was not an, it was not a poor experience, I will say. And that might just be me. Uh, personally, it was not a poor experience. Uh, it wasn't very hard, <laughs> I will say. Um you know, the actual story, sort of story that went along with it, uh, you know, you're in this dojo with, with mustard and you, you know, you're training up beside, uh, all the rest of them and you're like doing really good. You're sort of just steamrolling all of them because you're the champion. Um, you know, it was, it was interesting. Uh, it wasn't the highlight of my experience, but it was, you know, it, it is, it was what it was. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't hard. It, it definitely, it certainly was not difficult. Um, Like the, the, okay, there was a battle. This is going to be spoilers, by the way, the, the actual tower that you 
go to with Kung Fu in order to evolve into Urshifu. I guess that's not really spoilers because it was revealed that that's what you would be doing. Um, the like, uh, it wasn't hard at all, and I guess it, it like I don't know if it was supposed to be or not. I'm a little bit disappointed at how easy it was. Is something that I will say right off the bat. Um, except for at the very end, once you beat everything. You fight Mustard one more time, and he is beefed up literally in his team and in his character. And, like, that was the most fun that I had <laughs> playing this expansion was that final fight with Mustard. Uh, because it was hard. It was really hard. Uh, and I almost lost. And, like, I I had to switch over to my uh, to my, my, my champion team. I made, like, you know, I made a team... Um, sort of with the new Pokemon around the expansion. Uh, and, but eventually I had, I had to scrap those Pokemon because they just weren't good enough. Uh, because I, I had to use my champion team. Um, and I mean, it, it, it was difficult. It was really hard. And I really, really appreciate how difficult it was. I was genuinely surprised at how hard it was. Um, and I suppose that brings me into the, the next sort of thing that I want to talk about is the, you know, it's not really a huge thing. Obviously, the fact that they're releasing more Pokemon is very good, uh, but sort of just like the feel of the island and all the Pokemon that are around it, you know, the new quote unquote Pokemon that could be found, uh, you know, like, you know, you start off and you immediately see Rockruff and, and Jigglypuff and, and B B Chansey is pretty much everywhere, like in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, um, which makes, which is funny, you know, I like that, um, and like, uh, it, 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 it brought a lot of charm seeing these older Pokemon come back, um, and newer Pokemon coming back, you know, it, was, it really made me very happy to see all these Pokemon sort of coming together in what feels like their own little game. Um, and it truly did, it, it really did feel like an expansion. Um, I'm not going to go over every tiny detail. I'm honestly, I don't really know what else I would say. Like, like I said, the Pokemon coming back are really cool. The story was okay. Um, sort of, some of the after stuff when Hop visits you was a little bit boring and a little bit frustrating, but it was fun. There were some cutscenes with some interactive Pokemon, like a Lilligant and the, the Vespaquin and stuff that were really silly and cute and gave a lot of personality to Pokemon, which you know I love. Um... But it was a little tedious at times. Uh, it, it was it was very easy, like I said. Um, you know, there was mustard, there was honey, which were fine. The the dojo had a good character to it. Cub Fu, I like I like the whole Cub Fu arc. That was very fun. Where you you know, Cub Fu was cute. I didn't actually expect to really like Cub Fu that much, but I did actually really enjoy my Cub Fu, um, who I named Bear? Question mark Because when you when you when you when Cub Fu came out of the Pokeball, uh, it went Bear. <laughs> And I, I was like, this is its name now. I, I have assigned this. I have, I have assigned you your name as your first words to me. Um, she's very cute. I love her a lot. Uh, but then I immediately never used her again after she became an Urshifu because after that you're done pretty much. And I went to my champion team because I had to beat Mustard. Um, but you know, getting Urshifu is fun. Getting it in the Pokedex is fun. Um, the visuals were so good. The story was a little bit lackluster, but it was okay. The characters were okay. Um, Clara. Clara. I had shield, or sword, so I had Clara. Uh, I've heard that Avery is pretty much not any different. They pretty much are the same character, just like exclusives. I genuinely, I know this is a little bit sad, and this is kind of unlike me. Uh, it's rare for something like this to actually happen uh, in a game so, with that I love so much, like Pokemon. I very much dislike Clara. <laughs> I don't think that her character development was deserved. I don't think that it was it was good. I don't think her character is good. I think that she's annoying. I think that she's not enjoyable. Even you know, it's 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 one thing when a character is annoying or acts as a roadblock for the player that is likable in that sense. Obviously the character itself is not likable, but it's the appreciation towards the character and their development that makes you appreciate them. You know, even as a pseudo villain and as a roadblock for the player, like, like they intended her, I guess them to be, but I genuinely just did not like Clara. I thought I, I like, I found myself angry at, uh, when I was playing and I disliked that she made me angry. I like, and not in the way of like, oh my God, you're so annoying. You're messing up my dojo work. But like, I just, I just disliked her character a lot. 
Um, and that's a huge opinion for me, obviously. Uh, you're welcome to love her. I've seen a lot of a, a lot of opinions about Clara and Avery, uh, how they're really good, how they, people like them a lot. They really like Clara and Avery, but like I just, I genuinely just dislike Clara. Um, I don't think that she was a good character. Um, like I said, which is kind of rare for me, because normally I like to look at the bright side when it comes to these sort of characters and appreciate their appreciate their good parts. But I, I can't find a good part uh, in my heart. <laughs> uh, for Clara and I suppose Avery as well. I just, I just genuinely dislike them. Um, it didn't ruin my experience, but like I said, it definitely made me a little bit miffed at certain points. Uh, and it did, it did leave a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth, but it didn't really change my overall experience of the Isle of Armor, which was that it was very fun and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, Two other things before I sort of end this uh, discussion. I don't really know. Like I said, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, if, if you need my recommendation, yes, <laughs> get it. Uh, it was it was very good. Uh, if you liked Sword and Shield even a little bit, I guarantee you you will like this expansion. And it makes me just even more excited for the Crown Tundra, which personally I'm a little bit more... Um, excited about than I was the Isle of Armor because I think visually it looks a lot cooler. I like the Galarian birds. I like the Reggies. I like the sort of, um, the atmosphere more than the Isle of Armor, which makes me excited because if I liked this, then I know I'm going to like the, the Crown Tundra if they're, you know, given that they're sort of the same in quality because I enjoy ice stuff because you know ice is my favorite type and all uh and i think i'm gonna very much enjoy the crown tundra so if you enjoyed sword and shield uh, even a little bit um and you enjoy pokemon i would say get the expansion um it's it has a lot of very endearing things that made me just genuinely laugh out loud it has a lot it's a lot more funny than the base game there was a lot of jokes that actually hit for me um, a, a Sword and Shield had kind of a kind of a history of not being really funny when it tried to be, personally. Um, but I actually think that a lot of the jokes are really funny. Like there was a point where Clara grab you know it, Clara grabs the uniform from Mustard, and like she turned around and she did like the the item collection thing. It's like da 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 da, da, da you know. But like it cut off and like there was like a record scratch as a slowpoke flew by and, and grabbed it out of her hands. It was actually really funny. It's sort of like a meta joke. And I really, really like that they did that. Like I was not expecting these sort of jokes. Um, there, there's another thing, sort of one thing I do enjoy about Clara is that she like does this like character dialogue where she turns around and she's like, how the heck am I going to beat this girl? But like, it's so, it's so obvious that your character is just staring at her, listening to every word she's saying. And like, I don't know if that was intentional. I, I'm sure it is, but if it wasn't, even if it wasn't, it was, it was hilarious. Um, and like reminiscing on it now, it, it was funny. There was a lot of really humorous things, um, about this, about these characters and about this, the sort of atmosphere of this, of this expansion. And it was good. Um, there's a few other things. I know I mentioned two things, but I'm going to talk about those last. Like, I'm thinking about it now. There's a few things that I, that I, like, I don't re like, um, like, I'm not really sure if I should touch on them in depth. You know, there's, like, the, um, there's, like, the dojo upgrading system, which I actually haven't completed yet fully. You know, you use Watts and you upgrade it. You, it's almost like a build-your-own Poke Center, which I didn't have a problem with, but I heard a lot of people didn't really enjoy it that much. Um... There is the Cramomatic, which you combine items to make other items. That could be a whole episode in itself, I think. The Max Soup, which allows you to uh, turn, you know, turn Dynamax Pokemon into Gigantamax Pokemon if they can, uh, which is or any Pokemon, I suppose, which is very useful. Um, I used it on my, uh, or I'm a, I'm going to use it on my Alcremi that I used for my Champion team, uh, which wasn't Gigantamax, but now I can make her Gigantamax, which I'm very happy about. Um, oh, there's also the fact that you can take your Pokemon out and walk them around. I cannot believe that I forgot about this. Easily the best feature of this of this expansion. How in the world did I forget this? Easily the best feature of this expansion. It makes me happy because they've acknowledged it. And they know now that next time they release a main series game, they have to add it in, <laughs> which makes me excited. I mean, okay, they did it with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and then didn't add it in Sword and Shield, but that was under, that was a little bit understandable. But now that they've proven that it works, they have to add it. <laughs> and I assume it's going to be the same way in the Crown Tundra, which I'm so excited about. I loved seeing my Pokemon out 
it just brought back this nostalgia and just this genuine happiness in my soul, seeing my Glaceon or seeing my team members or any other Pokemon that I decided to take out and seeing their animations. I mean, granted, they use the same animations as when they're in the Pokemon in the overworld. You know, obviously, the Pokemon in the overworld have these animations. It was kind of stupid that they didn't do it before, um, which I'm so glad that they did. But um, you know, some Pokemon that you can take out can't be found in the wild, can't be found in the wild area or in any route. So seeing these animations now pretty much proves that every single Pokemon can be taken out for a walk. And like I said, it means that they can add it to the next game. <laughs> and it's, it's just, it's a very, it's a good feature. You don't need me to tell you that it's a good feature. It's a fun feature. It just adds so much to the game in such a simple, such a simple mechanic that adds so much personality to the game and it just makes it warms my heart to see people reacting positively to this uh and it warms my heart to even see it in the first place uh so there is the also i bumped my mic there sorry um there you know there's some other things like the the digging ma and pa which let you dig for watts and the armorite pieces which can be used to do a lot of things like the the mac the the stronger moves and the, the, um, you know, the max soup and stuff, um, not really worth talking about in my opinion. So two, uh, last two things I want to talk about is the diglet hunting, um, which I have not done yet. <laughs> uh, I, I, I went around in the beginning of the, in the beginning of my sort of, uh, interaction with this, with this expansion, going around trying to get as many diglets as I could. And then I remembered that there was 151 of them, uh, which is a neat little reference by the way. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm going to actually just focus on the story instead of going around spending all my time looking for these diglets, especially because I was streaming. Um, I do plan on maybe streaming it again sometime soon. Probably not. Uh, I might just do it on my own time to find all the Diglets, which you get Alolan Pokemon from, uh, or at least the Pokemon that I've gotten so far are Alolan Pokemon, which is very nice. And I assume also normal versions of Galarian Pokemon that you can't, that you previously couldn't get, uh, which makes me very happy that they're at with that they sort of added that. Um, and it makes me, it, I haven't looked up what you get from the, from getting 150 Diglets and I'm excited to see what you actually get uh for doing this this little side quest that adds again so much to the game in just a little a little mechanic <laughs> it's just like an easter egg hunt quite literally it's a treasure hunt that you go around and it it, it forces you to explore uh and it, it's it's good it's fun it's actually fun looking for these diglets um and i applaud them for for adding this, you know, coming up with this mechanic and adding it, it, it was a great treat, something that we didn't know about and something that I didn't expect or even know that I wanted, but I'm happy to see it. Uh, and the final thing I'd like to talk about is the uh, sort of not Isle of Armor. Um, of course, ending it with a non Isle of Armor mechanic, uh, the gym re refights or the gym leader refights, uh, which also include Leon your rivals, you know, Marnie, uh, Bede, Hop, stuff like that, um, are cool. I did a little bit of it on stream, and I do plan on going back and at least fighting everyone one time, um, and, I mean, I was a little bit overleveled for them, but it was, it was a little difficult. It was fun to see these characters come back, you know, characters that I sort of forgot about, uh, that had so much personality to them, and seeing their new teams, and it just reminds me of, you know, rematching gym leaders in old Pokemon games, uh, and I really, really enjoyed that feature, and I'm really glad they brought it back. So, how do I feel about the expansion? It's good, man. It's good. Uh, it's not the best, obviously. Nothing can be. Um, but it is a direct upgrade from Pokemon Sword and Shield. I will say that right off the bat, that I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> I enjoyed Sword and Shield, and I enjoy this expansion even more as an expansion. Um, I still haven't completed the Pokedex, the Living Dex, something that I did in Sword and Shield. I still have to do that. Oh, I'm just thinking about how long it's going to take me. Uh, but you know, it's all, it's all in good fun. Um, but... Just if you're if you're on the fence about getting this expansion, get it. Uh, if you want my if you want my personal opinion, 
get it. Uh, I think that it was very, very good. Uh, there was obviously a few things that I didn't that I disliked about it, like Clara and the difficulty, but it didn't ruin my experience. I don't think it ruined my experience even at all. It was a fun story. The characters are very fun. It was a beautiful scenery. Uh, the Pokemon coming back are very endearing. There's a lot of other mechanics that sort of just added to the, the big melting pot that was a very good DLC. In my opinion, I am not going to I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect to be talking about this so positively. And you might think that I that I'm talking about this a little bit more positively than I should, uh, which is sort of the nature of me. I'm kind of a of a, you know, subconscious optimist when it comes optimistic person when it comes to this sort of stuff, um, because I'm I'm biased. You know, I love Pokemon. I don't like anyone talking bad about my favorite Poke my favorite game series. So I'm a, maybe I'm a little bit biased. But as you saw with Pokemon Unite and a few other things that I've talked about in this episode, I am not one that is shy to admit when I dislike something. With Clara, with Pokemon Unite, uh, things like that. I and when I talked about the negativity towards Pokemon Sword and Shield, I did. I do. If I could go back and do redo that episode, I would maybe accept the negativity a little bit more uh, than I did. I think I was looking at things a little bit too much through rose-tinted glasses. But even though I am an optimistic person when it comes to these sort of things, and when it comes to my feelings about these things, about these games, about the expansion, um, I still think that you should you should get it i genuinely do i understand that i'm being optimistic a little maybe a little bit too much optimistic or too optimistic when it comes to my pseudo review of this expansion uh, and with that knowledge i still think that you should get this expansion <laughs> uh yeah i mean positivity overall very little negative um compared to the base game compared to Pokemon in general, I think it was I think it was pretty solid. Not the best, obviously, not by a long shot. I still think it has the same flaws as Pokemon Sword and Shield does. Uh, it does fix a few things, but it still has that uh, it's it you know the difficulty, um, the graphics a little bit. <laughs> uh, not going to get into it, but it does sort of fall into the same negatives and flaws that uh, Sword and Shield falls into. Um, but that doesn't mean it's bad. All Pokemon games have flaws. Sword and Shield, maybe a little bit than others. I'm willing to accept that. But even then, I still think it's worth a pickup. Anyway, uh, let's finish off this episode. Uh, very, one for one long. Well, not really super long, but for one, ju just full of a lot of different things and opinions. <laughs> I am exhausted. I don't know about you. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for listening uh, to me just ramble about these things that I love so very much. Uh, and even, you know, talk bad about these things that I love so very much. <laughs> um, I know that I've talked about a lot of different topics today with a lot of different emotions. Uh, but I very much do appreciate anyone who's who's listening in, anyone who's supporting my um, my this podcast, my endeavors as a content creator. If you're listening right now, thank you so much. Um just even for listening, even if you've never heard of me before, this is your first time listening to EvoCast. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, but we're not done. We still got one more thing to go. We got we got one more segment to go through. You know it. It's everyone's favorite segment where we talk about a random move. Every episode, of course, Move Tutor. And today, uh, today's move. I forget the number. Oh, I prepared this last night because I was preparing to talk about it last night, but I forget 51 i think i'm almost certain that it's number 51 it doesn't matter um move number 51 disable <laughs> disable in japanese temporary binding which is so much cooler than disable uh is a non-damaging normal type move introduced in generation one um oh there's a lot to unpack here huh uh in generation one Disable randomly selects one move that is in the target's current moveset and whose current PP is greater than zero, and it gives it a random chosen disabled duration length from zero to seven, which is reduced by one time the Pokemon attempts to execute, execute an attack. Interesting. Is that really what happened? I genuinely didn't know that. I didn't know that it just chose a random move. While the move is disabled, a message disabled will appear in place of the disabled move's PP, and the target will be unable to use the move until after the round until the round after disable wears off. Uh, disable will fail if one of the targets moved is already disabled. 
If the target does manage to select a move, such as, such as if it knows the move twice because of Mimic, or if the user is faster than the target and disables the attack that the target was going to use during that round, and attempts to execute it before the disable duration is over, it will only result in a wasted turn and a message that the move is disabled. Since the check to see if a move disabled happens after the duration reduction, it is possible to disable the move the target was about to use for only one turn and as a result have disable end immediately, still allowing the target to use said move during that round. That's so funny. It's like, you're disabled. You know, disabled wears off and they just use it anyway. If the target has only one move and that move is currently disabled, it will use struggle until it can select its move again. Disable will fail if the target has no PP left for any of its moves. Turn spent flinching, fast asleep, frozen solid, recharging, recharging, or partially trapped will not count towards the disabled duration length. Ooh. God, that is that is just salt in the wound. Even if even if unsuccessful, using disable against a Pokemon using rage will cause its rage to build. In Stadium, Disable will cause a Pokemon's Rage to build only if successful. The Disabled's move PP is not replaced with a Disabled message, message, though attempting to select the move will still result in a notice that the move is disabled. Accuracy in this generation is 55%. Jesus, that is so incredibly low. And essentially, every time... Wow, that move sucked in Generation 1. Essentially, you use Disable... It has pretty much a 50-50, a little bit better than a 50-50 chance of hitting every time. And even then, it'll choose a random move. So even, so you have to roll a 50% chance, pretty much. A little bit a little bit better than 50% chance. And then you have a 25% chance of it disabling the move that you actually want it to disable. Unless you just want to disable any move, and at that point, why? In Generation 2, Disable now disables the last move the target used, giving it a disable duration length of 2 to 8, which is reduced by 1 each time the target attempts to execute an attack. It will also fail if the target has not moved used a move yet, or if the last move it used was Struggle. Uh, in Generation 3, Disable now lasts 2 to 5 turns. Wow. E okay, up until this point, until Generation 4... It still it was only at a fifty five percent chance of hitting. That is so incredibly bad. And then what they changed the duration again. In generation four, disable's accuracy is changed from fifty five percent to eighty percent. Disable now lasts four to seven turns. And then they change it again in generation five. Disable now lasts for four turns. Its disable is ch its accuracy is changed from eighty percent to one hundred percent, and now can be reflected with magic coat. Disable does not affect Pokemon under the protection of Aroma Veil. Uh, I thought it, I thought it was Aurora Veil. Aroma Veil? What is Aroma Veil? What is... Oh, okay, it's an ability. I thought it was a move, and I'm like, Aurora Veil? If powered up by Normal AMZ and is disable, all of the user's lowered stats are reset. If the last move the target used was a max move, Disable will fail. Well, that was a lot... Jesus Christ, they really did not know what they wanted for this move. <laughs> wow. They they really did they like they went through so many different things. First it was like, oh yeah, that's a half chance of of occurring. It lasts for 0 to 7. And then it was like, oh yeah, okay, now it lasts from 2 to 5. Oh, never mind. It lasts from 4 to 7. And we changed its accuracy from 8, 55 to 80. And now it only lasts for 4 turns. Oh, by the way, it hits 100% of the time. <laughs> like, wow. Gosh darn. Uh, I'm not going to use... I'm not going to look at the descriptions. It's literally just like... It disables the foe's most recent move. Or it disables one of the target's moves. Like, like that's so... Boring. Uh, any trivia? There's a lot of uses of this move in, like, the anime, in Mystery Dungeon, in Smash? Oh, M Mewtwo. Right, Mewtwo uses the sable. Uh, is there any, uh, any trivia? No. There's no trivia. Apparently, well, apparently disable... Paralyzes the opponent in Red in Mystery Dungeon. Is that true? In Mystery Dungeon, Disable paralyzes the opponent instead of disabling the move. Wow. And in, in Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity, Disable seals the target seals the move that the target most recently used on the floor. Okay, so in in uh, in 
Mystery Dungeon Red, Red, Red and Blue Rescue Team, it just paralyzed them, which is boring. I wonder how it works in, uh, in, uh, DX. Probably the same way as in Sky, I assume. Anyway, uh, that was a, whoa, that was a lot for today's Move Tutor. I did not quite expect to talk about Move to uh, Disable so much. By the way, it has a PP of 20%. I don't think I said that. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I did not expect to talk about Disable quite as much as I did. I was like, okay, it's just Disable, but that actually had some meat to it. I can appreciate it. Thank you so much, Disable. Not sure why I'm thanking you, but I digress. Anyway, thank you all so much for listening. Um, you can catch me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Lilician or at Lilician, I suppose. I always make that mistake. Uh, or you can follow my Twitch streams at Lilician or you can follow my or subscribe to my YouTube at Lilician where you, I post uh, this podcast and also um, highlights for my streams and sort of, like I said, Let's Play style, um, you know, uh, stream VOD snippets uh, where I essentially just upload the entire playthrough of a game in episodes. Anyway, I thank you all so much for your continued support. Thank you so much for listening, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!